All right. Welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on another one of our um, Zoom presentations. Um, that we really appreciate everyone jumping in and, and watching this, whether you're watching it live, you joined us online, or uh, are going to sit back with a cuppa and, and watch this a little later. Um, my name is Alan Perry. I'm the director of CCUSA Australia and New Zealand. Um, I'm very excited to be joined by Andrew, director from um, Chief Hector YMCA Camp in Alberta, Canada. So, hey, welcome. Welcome, Andrew. Thank, thanks for having me, uh, Snowy. Uh, my camp name, I don't use it too often, but it's Dragonfly. So not quite the same as Snowy, but uh, th thanks for having me. Oh, look, my pleasure. My pleasure. Um, I, I'm assuming it's a little bit chilly up there at the moment. Yeah, it's uh, negative 30 Celsius, give oh, or take, wow. with the windshield. <laughs> right. Okay. So I'm here in shorts and a t-shirt, so I won't rub that in. So that's all good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a sweater indoors if that tells you how cold it is. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Well, Andrew, why don't you tell us a little bit? We've got a great video we'll show in a minute, but tell us a little bit, bit about you and your adventure with um, Chief Hector. Yeah, so I actually started work at Camp Chief Hector uh, back in 2008. Uh, I'd been with the Y already for a couple of years, um, but I jumped ship from Ontario to go out to Alberta, um, so just a couple of provinces over. Uh, and I worked at the Y for a couple of years before I jumped over to work with adolescent mental health and uh, the pull of camp, it, it never leaves you. Uh, it, every year I was gone, I always would think about like, oh, do I want to go back? Yeah, maybe one day. Uh, and about a year ago, I was lucky enough that this job opened up and uh, to call it a dream job would be an understatement. So I, I came back to the camp about a year ago and we've just been working through opening it back up after the pandemic and getting it ready for, for kids. And we were able to do that last year and we're just looking to keep growing. Oh, excellent, excellent. Well, look, I know pre-pandemic, we used to send a lots of international staff to you guys and they just couldn't get enough of of um, of camp and just how amazing it was. So, but look, to give folks a, 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 an overview of what camp looks like, I do have one of your videos, so bear with me. Let me share the screen and uh, we'll play that. And we'll see how we go. It's so layered. There are so many great things going on. I really think it's it's mostly about relationships and seeing kids connect and grow before your eyes and take on challenges. And they have this rich diversity to play amongst. It's, it's special. It's a really powerful way for YMCA to live out its values of respect and honesty and responsibility and caring. And we do that through individual growth through group development, connecting to the outdoors. We play together and we learn together and we move through challenging experiences and we get to laugh a lot and we reflect on those learnings and we transition that back into the rest of our lives and this becomes people's other world, this other family. You're going to have this deep connection to being in the outdoor world and understanding your place. We were asking this little boy what was his favorite thing or, or what camp meant to him. And he got really calm and quiet. And he said, camp is where all my stories come from. So that's pretty, um, yeah, that kind of hits camp right on the head. It's exactly what it is. It's, you know, I, as someone else who, you know, I worked for five years at, at camp and I've been uh, doing this for many, many years. Camp is definitely life-changing and an amazing place, not just for the campers that we care for um, as camp counselors and and, uh, and supervisors and leaders, but um, it, it, it changes our lives um, for the better, I think, and, and just gives us that sense of belonging. Um, I know I, I definitely feel that, um, you know, probably also an added bonus. I also worked at a YMCA camp. So, uh, yeah, I, I definitely feel that as well. So it's great. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about Chief Hector, some of the philosophy. How long has camp been around for? What's the age group of kids um, and how long did the kids come to camp for? Yeah, uh, if anything, uh, I'm going to ask your help to keep me on time because I feel like I could talk about everything you just said for for hours um, well, to start camp is uh, we're turning 93 this year. So um, 
we've we we've been around uh, on the site we're on now for for many decades but we didn't start here we started actually just uh, across the highway and down the road a little bit um it originally started with a partnership with uh hector crawler um and that's that's who our namesake is after so so camp chief hector yeah we've, we've been around for for quite some time we're at the base of uh it's called mount yates or the fire lookout in kananaskis if you want to google us um, literally, we are at the foot of a mountain, and when you walk out of your accommodations, you're just staring at another mountain. Um, so, yeah, it's it's um, maybe about 45 minutes outside of the city, but it's it's a good mix of being close enough to the city that we can get those those uh, kinds of kids who've maybe never been in the outdoors before. Um, but it's it's far enough and in the in the mountains enough that it feels like you're in a whole other world. Um, and uh, the type of camps we run, we're we're all over the map. We we run all year round. We only shut down for about a month over Christmas because of how cool it can get and uh, how busy uh, Christmas is for for school kids. But from September to June, um, I'd say ninety percent of our business is uh, like grade six, grade five, six, seven outdoor education. Uh, we do eco school or or various forms of that outdoor school. Um, where the kids actually come and stay with us for four days and three nights. Um, and uh, the, the counselors, my counselors, will work with those kiddos to, to mix a bit of that camp experience where they're going on hikes and playing all those games uh, with some of their, their actual like uh, outdoor ed curriculum. Um, and then in the summer, we're one of the largest YMCA camps uh, in the country. We're actually one of the largest camps in the country um, where, where we'll have uh, hundreds of kids come out a week anywhere from ages uh, seven all the way up to 17. Um, and uh, what they do is um, it's sort of like a skill progression where the seven-year-olds are coming and maybe they're they're coming for about a week and they're they're just getting their their toes wet in the outdoor world. Whereas like the the 15, 16 year olds are actually going on some pretty extensive out trips, like upwards of of uh, well, I mean, our longest is 42 days, which is uh, called our oh, wow. Saturday trip. But uh, mo most of the international staff don't do that in their first year. So hopefully I'm not <laughs> going to freak you out. Um, but I'd say our average trips are anywhere from like four to eight days, depending on the age group that you're working with. Uh, and, and we don't need you to come with too much experience. We do a lot of the, the, the teaching and training in-house. And I know I might be jumping a little ahead in the agenda, but um, part, part of what we pride ourselves in is just the same as we want to teach these kids the skills to be in the outdoors and the comfort to be in the outdoors, we want to teach you, you folks how to do it too. So you might come with your own set of experiences. Uh, we don't have all the poisonous snakes and spiders that you do, so <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. We're going to teach you about the other ones, like the bears and the cougars uh, and things like that. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a learning for, for everyone, and we'll, we'll teach you what we want you to teach. So please don't, don't fret too much about that. Yeah. Um, and, and honestly, I'd say our philosophy in a nutshell is we want to we want to give kids that experience in the outdoors. We want to get them here, whether it's um, like like I said, their first time or their 15th time. Uh, a big part of what we do is, is just getting them here, getting them comfortable, getting the parents comfortable. And uh, we also have a pretty, pretty good subsidy program. We call it a Let's Raise program. And we're lucky that we have such a big Y connected to us, the Y of Calgary. Like there are we, we, we are the Y Calgary as well. So. Uh, we, we use that subsidy to get to get everyone out if we can. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Look, and certainly um, I just brought up the the little profile we had. So you're literally almost right at the base of Banff. So a lot of Aussies and Kiwis probably know Banff for the winter. Um, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, right there and and not that far out of Calgary. So it's it's quite, I, I'm assuming on time off and so forth, it's quite easy for um, the staff to get into town and or into Calgary and do that sightseeing and, you know, take that break. 100%. I would say you, you hit the nail on the head. In the, in the big seasons, uh, all the Canadians want to be the ones to take the Aussies and the Kiwis out <laughs> to show them what Banff and Calgary is all about. So it's not that hard to find a ride in with people that you're working with. Uh, I know some of my closest friends are people that I literally worked with, and uh, I was lucky enough to head down to Australia and get to see their neck of the woods. Um, so you'll form those friendships fairly quickly. And yeah, the, they're just as keen to show you around as you're going to be to look around. So yeah, Banff's about... 45 minutes in the other direction and and you'll get to see all three in your time at camp for sure. 
Yeah, that's amazing. Amazing. And and look, certainly, um, you know, that's the great thing about, I guess, Chief Hector is that, you know, especially for those that are looking at getting on the IEC um, working holiday visa, which will open um, on the 9th of January uh, next year. So we'll have plenty of time to get your visa sorted and everything and a job as well. But, uh, you know, you allow folks to come in towards the end of, of April, do some outdoor education programming. Um, you know, you train them up, which we love. Um, and then, you know, you roll straight into the summer and then have that summer experience stay on after camp and then you know because the IEC visa is that two-year visa it gives you that opportunity to you know maybe land a job up in Vamp or uh you know or, or let us place you elsewhere at, at a ski resort and come back for summer round two in 2024 so it works a treat yeah you, you're you're not far off from from what most of the most of the the gappers is is what we say but they're not all gappers anymore they, they could be 25 or what have you but yeah, it's, we, we go up to about September and there's plenty of opportunity to stick around in the fall, but we don't expect you to, but we do have lots of positions if you do want to stick around in the fall. And often our fall contract ends right as the winter contracts are starting at the ski hill. Um, so whether it's that you want to work with us and then jump to a ski hill or whether you just want to work with us to get a little more money to then go and play at the ski hill also <laughs> is, is not that uncommon. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I'd say that there are several people who who come back. It's it's not always something that happens. I think um, if if you've had any older older relatives or friends who've done it, I know that um, the the pay was always something because uh, you're you're spending a, a fair bit of money to come over. So usually it's those people who want to stick around for that full two years that tend to come back. But we, we'll happily take you back anytime you want to come back, even if it's just for another season. Um, but we're equally happy to sort of set you up to to travel all around the country because there's so many good things to see in Canada. Yeah, def definitely. And and look, you know, the, what you guys pay for the outdoor education programming is amazing. And then during the summer, it, you've got you'll make the the two thousand Canadians the camp counselor. You make a little bit more support staff. So that's the other one. If if we've got Aussies and Kiwis out there, they're like, look, I'm not. I don't have a lot of experience with kids. I'm not quite sure I want to be in a cabin with kids. You know, you've got that support staff role where you you know you hire folks for kitchen and maintenance work and you know to, to, to get out and sort of you know what I call the backbone of camp and keep it running so it's it's pretty amazing there so yeah and and we've been lucky that we've been able to up our salaries for for everyone the international staff get paid the same as the the national staff and and yeah I think if you if you count even the training weeks all nine to ten weeks of camp you're you're walking away with with a pretty penny. Um, yep. it, it should well, I mean, relatively a pretty penny. Uh, it's like four or five thousand dollars minus yep. what you're probably going to spend uh, yeah. on your days off when you're sightseeing. So it's it's we we've gotten lucky that we've been able to push that envelope a little bit. Yeah, definitely. And then tack on the fact that you've got food and accommodations included. So, you know, it, yeah. it certainly, you don't have to sort of fork that out, especially uh, with what things are costing, at least down here in Australia, it's uh, for food and food and accommodations. Uh, you know, it, it's a nice saving. So it, it all it all adds up. So it's great. Um, so tell us a bit about um, the jobs that you're currently hiring for and, and maybe uh, tee that in with, with how many like um, activities, sessions are done throughout the course of the day. I've got, you know, the page up where you, you you're sort of hiring for a good cross section of skills. So maybe run us through what maybe a typical day would be like and how the kids rotate around to different classes. Yeah, so um, we actually try to keep the counselors with the with the kiddos that they're working with in the in the school season for the whole week, uh, and then in the summer for the two weeks that you're with them. Um, so we we try to keep them pretty um, pretty connected, and we we want you to get connected with them like. Uh, a lot of the times when those kiddos grow up, they can they can remember the name of their counselor, the nickname of their counselor, all the funny stories. So we we love that the the that idea of these kids feeling that sense of belonging, where they get to connect with their group and their counselor, and um, and just like learn how to how to sort of thrive in that setting is what we go for. Um, but the, the activities that you're going to do with the group. So when you're when you're in the outdoor education season, um, a lot of it is going to be exactly what those outdoor adventure skills are sort of summing up for you there, yeah. um, where um, uh, e even upwards, depending on which position you get, even that outdoor cooking, but we're, we teach you a lot of that. So the kids are going to learn how to navigate using a map or that orienteering piece. You're going to teach them how to pack a day pack properly and how to layer up. Um, you're going to be taking them on a day hike in, in those four days that they're with us. 
uh, and and even along the way, possibly bringing a stove, and we'll teach you and you teach them how to how to properly heat up water and set up the stove safely. Uh, but then we mix that with the other fun stuff. So uh, you're you're teaching them about like trees and forests and animals. You're going to be doing uh, some games. We call it the animal game or predator prey, where think of it as like a giant game of cops and robbers, but with curriculum all thrown in there, like teaching them about what an omnivore and an herbivore and a carnivore is. Um, and, and even some of that smaller stuff. I know the one that, that freaks counselors and kids out alike is that drama. Uh, we, we just sort of do creative arts in general. If you're more yeah. of an arts and craftsy person, great, we'll lean on you for that. If you're more of a, of a um, drama person, fantastic. If you're musical, please bring that too. We, we have djembes, we have guitars, like by all means, you, you can bring music too. But we'll teach you enough that even if you don't have an ounce of artistic ability in your body, you'll still be able to get by. <laughs> Um, and yeah, there, there's archery, there's canoeing, there's climbing, like we have rock climbing and a high ropes course, YouTube, something called the giant swing. And some of our kiddos get to do that um, in the spring and summer. Um, I, canoeing, oh, sorry, the phone's going off. Uh, um, canoeing is, uh, I'm, I'm gonna put a little asterisk there. You can see the lake behind me. This isn't the real lake, obviously it's frozen. <laughs> Um, but uh, last year, actually, we we didn't get a lot of rainfall in the spring, and the water level got so low that we actually had to turn off canoeing uh, at like mid-July. But oh, wow. before that happens, or if that happens again, we, we try to get out uh, canoeing and paddle boarding and things like that. Uh, we also have horses on site, so uh, depending on what group you're connected with, you're going to possibly get some horse experience. And if you have horse experience, we even hire wranglers um, where you can come and actually be the one to take care of the horses and lead the trail rides. Um, so uh, I, I'm sort of talking really quickly and jumping all over the map, but uh, that sums up a lot of what we do. So even when it does come to canoeing and climbing and horses, you don't have to be the one to know that skill because you get to stay connected with your group. When your group goes to those program areas, we have program staff that are trained specially to run that for you. So when you go climbing, it's like trained climbing staff that are letting you and your group go climbing. When you go horseback riding, it's those trained wranglers that are taking the group horseback riding. We are not expecting you to know every single bit of that. But if yeah. you have those skills, mention that in your resume, because even if you're just applying to be a counselor, we might see a, a position that you're, that you're going to be suited for. And we'll ask. We won't just tell you you're going to be doing it. Uh, if you really want to come and be a counselor, even though you've worked with horses your whole life, great, we will happily let you be a counselor. We're not gonna force you into a position you don't wanna do uh, if you're trying to grow your own skill set and grow your own resume. Awesome, awesome. All right, so hopefully, um, and the link for that page is up on our website. So folks can jump on and, and check that out. So a, a typical day, how many classes do the kids sort of rotate through? Sort of what, and uh, I guess, what time do you wake up in the morning? You know, what's the, yeah. you know? Uh, so I'd say uh, we aim to try to wake up around 7, 7.30, and by day two or three, the kids are usually tired enough that that'll work, but <laughs> the first day they might get up a little earlier because they're really excited. Um, we have breakfast at 8.30. Um, we'll often do an activity before breakfast for those really keen early risers. That way they're not just trying to keep them, keeping the, the cats herding into a cabin. Uh, you can let their energy out. And then we have breakfast at 8.30. And then depending on, on the day, there's one or two blocks of activities in the morning between breakfast and lunch. Um, so they're anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. If it's all one big block, it's usually because it's a larger activity like that predator prey game I was talking mm -hmm. about. Um, and then lunch is at 1230. Um, sometimes you're actually going to be having your lunch out and about. We're like, we'll, we'll be packing you up a chili lunch in the colder spring or maybe a crate lunch where it's like build your own sandwiches in the summer. Uh, and then after lunch, you have usually about three rotations or three activity blocks. And again, sometimes we'll mash a couple together depending on what you're doing. Uh, and those activity blocks that I was talking about, that's where you might go and do archery or go to climb for a block or go to the waterfront for a block. Um, and then dinner's at 5.30. Uh, in the spring season, you're off after dinner for a couple of hours. Uh, and then some counselors, most counselors are bunking in with the kiddos. Um, so we're getting back. You're usually off after dinner for about two hours. And then you're back to either run a campfire with songs and, and skits. Or that's where we'll do sky science, where we're teaching them about constellations and stars and, and astronomy or astrophysics. Uh, and then bedtime, we start sending everyone to bed around nine, but that's time to like brush your teeth and things yeah. like that. Um, we actually have shifted this last year. So if you've ever looked up Camp Chief Hector, you'll see teepees everywhere in every photo. Mm -hmm. uh, most of our camp has actually shifted from teepees to yurts. 
Um, so the yurts are uh, the two, two main reasons for the shift is one, we, we have kept some teepees, but it allows us to be a little more thoughtful and, and purposeful with the teepees so that we can actually get more connected to the stony people, one of the bands nearby, but also just cultural people around us in general to put the teepees up and teach us in a different way and let us teach the kids in a different way. Um, but also the yurts lets us uh, shift away from just having too many being used without that plan fold. But then the yurts also give us more of a, a three season approach where they'll stay warmer longer um, and, and we can have a little more comfort, especially nowadays with, uh, with more and more kiddos wanting to come to camp. If we can find a way to get more kiddos out safely, we want to. Um, and so bedtime, uh, all the yurts and teepees, if you are in one or the other, they have um, stoves in them, like wood burning stoves. And when that stove's going, it's a balmy 25 degrees Celsius <laughs> inside the yurt. So oh, nice. uh, you'll be warm even on the coldest nights. <laughs> That's amazing. Now, uh, we do get questions that are like, okay, what time off do I get? So maybe um, I, I know you've got the um, outdoor education program and then the summer. So maybe let's um, talk about the like what's their time off for outdoor education and then what's their time off during the summer yeah I would say the in in the outdoor education season just because of how it's set up we you get a little more time off in the outdoor education season but that's because our ratios are a little different and that I guess maybe it's not necessarily more or less it's more clumped together so in the outdoor education season you get off from about Friday afternoon to uh, Monday morning um, so you get that whole weekend off. Now, some people are welcome to pick up overtime shifts because we do have weekend groups that come out mm -hmm. uh, and we'll pay you the, the extra money if you want to pick up those shifts. But no one's expected to because some people like you, you said, Snowy, they might want to go explore and, and check out things on the weekend. In the summer, uh, because uh, counselors sort of switch between some of them do one weeks and some of them do two weeks, we sort of give that day and a half or two days off. Um, either all on one weekend if you're doing the one-week programs or if you're doing a two-week program you split your blocks up throughout the the week or the the two weeks so one uh, I guess every two weeks you'll get that day and a half two days off but in between those two weeks you get that same time equivalent but you might take an afternoon block off here or an evening and an overnight block off there so we let you take off time off blocks Okay. Um, but also in the summer, there's more of a chance for counselors to spell each other off because you're co-counseling in the summer. So when you're co-counseling, you might stay with the kids in the evening, even though neither one of you are on officially time off, while the other one gets to go and, and sort of take a, an hour or two break, um, knowing that you get to spell each other off throughout the day. Awesome. That's amazing. Um, tell us a little bit about what you see, you know, you've been a, around for, for a while. Um, you know, we get a lot of folks going, oh, what am I going to get out of camp? How's it going to change me? You know, we mentioned at the, at the beginning, you know, how camp can change lives for the kids, but also us, you know, as, as a, a employer, I guess, um, what's some of the skill sets that you see that the internationals come in and, and, and leave with? What do they learn from camp? Yeah, I would say, um, especially in this day and age, counselors will walk away with, with a much greater understanding of like self-care and self-regulation and time management where you, you come to camp and that first week or two is going to feel weird because you're working in ways and with kids and you're, you're on a lot longer than you might have been outside of camp, but you, you adapt pretty quickly and you get to learn from the, the people like myself and, and Trent and Taylor and uh, Peter and some of the other leaders at camp just about tips and tricks and how to do that. But I really do think you have a leg up on people when when you go to other other jobs or or other employment opportunities where you get to talk about how how you know how to recharge at the end of a long day uh, and come back or how to use your time off more effectively when it's when it's peppered throughout the day. Um, I also think your your sort of uh, attunement with kiddos um, where you get to sort of notice their body language and their facial expressions and you're more mindful of your body language and your facial expressions. So you definitely get a lot of really, really good nuanced work with kids um, and skills when working with kids. Um, and then also just some of the hard skills, like you're, you're also gonna learn how to trip, like how to go into the back country and, and meal plan and um, like sort of like spread your gear out in, in a certain way uh, and know how to sort of like lean on the strengths and, and the challenges that the kids in your group might have so that you're not uh, putting too high of an expectation on anyone, but you're also not martyring yourself and putting too high of an expectation on yourself. Um, and then uh, really there's just lots of other little skills that you're gonna pick up. So you're gonna be engaging with parents in a different way. You're gonna be engaging with um, like possibly um, like counselors from other sections. So it's one of those things where, yeah, you're a coworker, but you might only see them once in a blue moon. 
um, but you're still going to come together, run this sort of program event, and then walk away and separate. So even that sort of dynamic about working with people who, who you work with, but don't necessarily see. Um, and then any of those specialty things. So you might learn skills like we, we do cross train with things like um, the, the paddling and the climbing and the horses. Uh, and things like that. And, and even just personally, when I, when I left the Y for, for that time, uh, genuinely, you, you could tell the, the quality of a candidate when they did put something like camp um, or, or even like before and after school care on their resume, um, they, they just had a different sense of, of responsibility, a different sense of task management, a different sense of time management. And, and honestly, if I saw someone who had one or two summers of summer camp on their resume, they, they always got put to the higher, higher part of the, the pile. And I mean, obviously I'm a little biased because I work there, but uh, <laughs> really it's just you, you, you do learn uh, a different sort of skill when you come to camp, if that makes sense. No, 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 absolutely. And, and, and we hear and see that all the time with folks that return from camp and they, you know, we catch up with them and they've got a job and, and they see the benefits of having camp on their resume it just shows a whole different, you know, like talking point to get them in the door, but then expanding on that and, uh, and just that I almost like a maturity and, a, you know, you get this enthusiasm and, and love of what you do and, and that shines through during a job interview. So, it, yeah, we, we definitely agree with that. And, and on top of that, you've got friends from around the globe now you can go and, and you know Aussies do it really well and so do our Kiwis it's called the fine art of mooching so we mooch quite well as we travel around the world so it's good <laughs> it's very true when I when yeah. I went down to Australia I was there for a month and I think I maybe had to pay for a hotel for a week of it yeah. so I learned the fine art of mooching from you folks <laughs> Um, look, um, for those people that are really keen to jump on and have an interview with Andrew and and uh, and get the ball rolling, it's a really easy process. You just go to our website, ccusa.com.au or .co.nz, um, click on the big apply button, and then just sign up for the Camp Counselors Canada program. A couple of steps to go through. Look, there is an application form you'll need to complete, and that's where you get to tell us about your experience with children. And look, it, it doesn't have to be anything special, maybe some baby sitting maybe you're a peer support leader at school um you know maybe you coached a netball team and i know we don't you, you know you may not do netball that much oh you do actually in canada yeah um, only, only when the aussies bring it bring it okay cool yeah. okay um but maybe you, you taught a younger netball squad or, or maybe you know you work down you you work at the beach and so you're a lifeguard and maybe you work with the nippers so you know I, I, i'm assuming like many camps you know you just want to know that you know, if you're traveling halfway around the world and you guys shove them in a in a yurt with a, or yurt with a, a bunch of kids they don't freak out and go oh my god children ooh, <laughs> you know type of thing yeah. so you just want to know that they've got that experience there and then the skill set certainly sounds from you know what what you're saying Andrew you're, you're looking for general counselors people that have anything from a beginner and intermediate to advanced level in such a good cross-section of all those activities so so you know don't, don't think you need to be an Olympic athlete I, I think to, to come to camp yeah, a hundred percent. Even if you're not that outdoorsy of a person, like I said, those younger kids aren't going on those longer trips. If that's more where your skill is, great. We'll we'll uh, sync you up there. Even if your skills with older campers, but you're still not that outdoorsy, then great. Maybe it's the climbing or the waterfront that we're having you work. Uh, and and even those other things, like um, you might not have a lot of experience thinking of like the the critical thinking when oh no, what do I do if a kid sprains their ankle? We, we'll teach you that. Um, I mean, if you if you come with with your own connections to working with like different cultures and indigenous people, fantastic. But if not, again, we'll teach you and we'll like that's a skill you get to walk away with whether you had it coming in or not. If you had it, we'll grow on it, and if you don't, we'll be sort of your your first chance to get exposed to it. So. Yeah, highlight what you bring, but don't be worried if you don't have too, too much. Just really, I, I think Snowy, as you put it, like talk about your, your exposure with kids, whether it's a little bit or a lot, because we can then sort of put you where that works. If it's only mm -hmm. been babysitting your family, great, we still got you. If it's been like, no, I ran soccer teams for five years, fantastic, we got you either way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We'll look at this. So you'll do the application, a couple of references, um, and then our staff will reach out and have a good chat to you. And that's where you let us know, say, hey, look, I'm really keen on Chief Hector. And then in January, um, we'll start getting your application in front of Andrew, setting up some um, virtual job fair times and getting that all sorted. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll sort of work around, you know, your schedule, Andrew, but also then, you know, our participant schedule to try and get all of that lined up and, and, and get you rolling 
and get you the job, at, which is really important. And I feel like uh, a lot of folks are like, okay, I've got the job. Now let's get the IC visa. And uh, and so it kind of goes hand in hand. Um, Alison, who um, kind of like is our Canadian expert, um, my fellow director, um, she'll be able to walk you through the IC visa process. Um, and that's what we're here for is just to sort of walk you through that whole process and, and get the whole ball rolling. So it works a treat. Yeah, and um, just to, to take that a, a step further, I would say when it comes to things like the, the references or any sort of like time constraints, don't bend over backwards for us. There, there's a whole team of me that are going to be helping with the interview and hiring process. So if you only have a certain window, we'll find a way to make it work. And uh, we know you you give a couple of references to, to CCUSA. Um, we, we do references as well, but we do them all digital now. So you don't even need to worry about your references with phone calls. It's all over email. Um, and and really, we, we can be quite accommodating. So uh, even to the point where as much as we would love one of your resumes to be sort of a supervisor or maybe someone who's watched you in a job before, if you don't have any of those, that's okay. We, we are more than happy with character references or former teachers or family members that are um, maybe a little bit more removed, but had you sort of helped them with a the project, things like that. Perfect. No, no, it sounds sounds awesome. Um, once once we've got your IC visa and your job all sorted, um, we'll help you and sort of advise you. We, we work with travel agents in Australia and New Zealand, so you're free to utilise them um, to help you with flights or you can jump on and, and grab your own. Um, so nice and easy. And then um, you do get insurance for the summer program period, but you can extend your insurance to cover your pre and post camp work. In fact, our insurance policy goes out as far as two years. Um, it's very affordable. Um, in the market and it's great you'll be on that one policy from start to finish and that's part of the IEC regulation as well. Um, if you're coming in for a two-year work visa you'll need to have two years insurance purchased up front um, before you fly in. If you are only going to come in and say look I'm only going to go for a year you can just purchase one year's insurance but then immigration will only allow you to come in for one year on your IEC visa. But look these items will talk you through that process and, and help you out as we go along. So it works what works pretty well so it, it's good um andrew any other um before we sign off any other last words of advice or or, or suggestions for those that are really keen on on jumping on board with chief actor uh advice or suggestions no i i mean the like things to sort of put your mind at ease you've hit a lot of them snowy but know that we'll work with you we'll help get you to and from the airport if if you need help with that we like the we actually the so the person right below me one of my supervisors Peter he's in an international staff who's stuck around long enough to sort of work his way up the ranks so we'll, we'll have people like Peter who can also maybe run a bit of an informal session of like okay now that you're hired what else should you know before you get here <laughs> like how to get a cell phone over here how to get a bank account over here if you want to have a local bank account so um yeah we're we're, we're pretty well um established and we're very invested in letting you have a, a sort of a, a successful time when you're over here so even if it's not me any of the team that's going to be working with you will be great but there is no silly question and we've probably worked through all of it before so if you have them ask them and and we'll give you the best uh the best shortcut or the best tip and trick uh to get it covered when you get here no, it sounds perfect, perfect. And you've got the CCUSA, you know, we've been around for over 35 years. So we're here to help you and and know what, it, what what we need to do on the ground here to get you over and have the most successful summer. And once you are there during the summer, you've got camp and then you've also got our CCUSA team that are available for any emergencies as well. So look, you're, you're definitely in safe hands from start to finish, absolutely. So, um, and, th and then obviously once you finish it at Chief Hector, we've got our Work Adventures Canada program where we can organize a ski resort job for you so we can bundle our programs together. So we can kind of definitely make sure that we can assist you, um, you know, through the summer and winter, um, enabling you to head back to camp, hopefully in 2024. So that'd be perfect. So all good. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Well, look, Andrew, we'll sign off, but thank you so much for joining us. I really do appreciate you taking the time to, to jump on and, uh, and, and, and spend your evening uh, with us. Um, stay warm and uh, so lovely to, to catch up with you. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. And I look forward to meeting any of you who are watching.